those of you who are standing at the back, there are plenty of seats up here in front, so come forward to put the seats here in the front.
repentance. I am the sheep that is lost. Savior, call me back and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your judgments. Of old you created me from nothing and honored me with your divine image. But when I disobeyed your commandment, Lord, you returned me to the earth from which I was taken. Lead me back again to your likeness and renew my original beauty. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your judgments. I am an image of your inexplicable glory. Though I bear the scars of my transgressions, in your loving kindness must I have compassion and cleanse the person you have formed. Grant me the homeland for which I long for, and once again make me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your judgments. Give rest, O God, to your servant, and place her in paradise, where the choirs of the saints and the righteous will shine out as bright lights. Give rest to your departed servant, Lord, overlooking all of her offenses. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us devoutly raise our voice in praise of the threefold radiance of the one God, holy and you. Eternal Father, co-eternal Son, and Divine Spirit, fill us with light to worship you in faith, and rescue us from the eternal fire. Both now and forever, and to the ages of ages, amen. Hail, honoured Lady, who gave birth to God in the flesh, to save us all, and through whom the human race has found salvation, Of your righteous, O giver of life and loving God. 
I remembered the prophet crying out to him, earth and dust. Then again I looked in the tombs and saw the naked bones, and I said, Who is this, king or soldier, rich or poor, righteous or sinner? But give rest among the righteous to your servants, O Lord, as a loving God. My beginning and my substance came from your command that fashioned me. For it was your will to form me into a living creature, from nature both visible and invisible. From the earth you formed my body. By your divine and life-giving breath you gave me a soul. Wherefore, O Christ, give rest to your servant in the land of the living, in the tents of the righteous. Give rest the life-giving Saviour to our sister, whom you have removed from this temporary world, as she cries out, Glory to you. I mourn and I lament when I contemplate death, and I see our beauty that was made in the image of God, lying in the graves, disfigured, without glory and without form. Oh, how strange indeed! What is this mystery that has come upon us? How have we been given to corruption and yoked together with death? Truly, as is written, it is by God's command, he who gives rest to the departed. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your death, O Lord, became the agent of immortality. For if you had not been laid in the tomb, paradise would not have been opened. Wherefore, give rest to the departed one as a loving God. Now and ever into the ages of ages, amen. O pure Virgin, the gate of the Word, and the Mother of our God, plead for mercy on her soul. Magali. Amen, 
mean I tell you, the one who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment but has passed out of death into life. I mean, I mean, I tell you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given the Son also to have life in himself. He also gave him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not be astonished at this, because the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing of myself, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who has trampled down death, destroyed the devil, and given life to your world, give rest, Lord, to the soul of your servant, Vimitra, who has fallen asleep, in a place of light, in a place of peace, in a place of joy, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. Gracious and merciful God, forgive every sin committed by her, whether in word, deed, or thought, for there is no one who lives and does not sin. You alone are without sin, your righteousness is eternal, and your word is the truth. For you are the resurrection, the life and the repose of your departed servant, Libica, who has fallen asleep by Christ our God. And to you we offer glory with your eternal Father, and your all holy, good, and life given spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, our God. Glory to you. O que necrom que zondon din exousia nekoros athanatos vasileus, que anastasi que necrom Christos alithinos teus simon. Des presbies dis panachanto, aigias a tu mitros, ton aigion endoxum que parimfimon apostolum, Τον Ασίων και Θεοφόρων Πατέρων και Μητέρων ημών, των Αγίων Ενδόξων Προπατόρων Αβραάμ, Ισαάκ και Ιαγώβ, του Αγίου και Δικαίου Φίβου Αυτού Λαζάρου του Τετραημέρου και Πάμπτων των Αγίων, την ψυχή τη Εξημών Μεταστάση του Ισαυτού Δήμητρα, εν σκηνέ δικαιών τάξε, εν κόρπη Αβραάμ αναπαύσε, και μετά των Δικαίων και των Αγίων συναριθμίσε. Ημάς δε ελεήσε και σώσε, ως αγαπτός και φιλάνθρωπος και ελεήμων Θεός. Place the soul of your servant Δήμητρα, who was departed from us in the tents of the righteous. Grant her rest in the bosom of Abraham, and number her among the righteous and the saints, and have mercy on us as a good and loving God. Eternal be your memory, however memorable, Worthy of blessedness, system. Eonia sublimi axioma garistos, caemis tus adefimum. Eternal be your memory, however memorable, and worthy of blessedness, system.
been written by Dimi's siblings. Dear Dimi, we all love you very, very much, and we always will. You were and still are such a beautiful sister. We will always remember you for your lovely smile, your big eyes, your curly hair, and your cute face. Your presence always brightened our day and you always lit up the room. You were the mini mum that made us happy and to make sure we were doing what we were told. To Georgie, Anna and Anthony, you helped guide them along the way. They all looked up to you. You were their big older sister. You were the little sister that shone upon Eva, Vicky, Ange and Kat's day. You knew how to make us smile and laugh. You were always there when we were upset and needed a hug. You were such a cute little muffin to us all and we still need you. You're an absolute legend at everything you did. Every time you touched the water, you swung like a legend. Every time you touched the cricket ball, you showed everyone that you could bowl them out and you were going to smash everyone for a six with you, with your strong muscles. You even loved dancing and singing. You looked and sounded amazing when doing it with your beautiful smile. We all remembered you loved doing karate and how happy you were when you got your black belt. You were so good at soccer and smart in school. You were such a superstar and we could never name all the cute, funny, random memories we all had because there are so many. We could be here for days. We all love to joke around with you. And we will all still hope that one day we can all joke around together all over again. We remember the things you used to say. I'm stronger than you, and I'm better than you. I'm taller than you. We all used to joke about it and have a little giggle. But we know it's very true. You were such a strong little fighter, even stronger than mum. And that's a little hard to do. You're always better than someone, for example, you were better than Vicky at singing, better than Georgie at dancing, better than Kat at cricket, better than Anthony at karate, better than Eva at school, better than Ange at soccer, better looking than Anna. <laughs> You're a child that all teachers wanted in their class because of how well you behave and how nice and polite you always were. We all thought you were hilarious as well, especially when you joked about your height. We will never forget you, and we will always love you, Timmy. Love all your sisters and brother. Dear Timmy, we all miss you down here and love you so much. We wish you were here still making memories together. Every night I look up at the sky and I can see you. You're the biggest and brightest angel. I want things to be different, but you're the chosen one. If everyone wants to be brave and strong, they could just look at you and think, I want to be just like you. Love your twinsy, Georgie. To Dimmy, I love you so much and we all miss you very much. I miss all the memories we had and all the love we had. I see you come every night and I think you're beautiful. I love you and you are very strong all the time. I am very sorry this happened to you. So I love you even more. Love, Anna. Dear Dimmy, I saw you in the sky, Dimmy. I love you very much and I wish you were still here with me. I wish you were never sick so we could be together. I miss playing soccer with you, playing games with you, talking to you and always having so much fun. I miss you so much. 
But the one thing I miss most about you is playing on the playground and laughing. Love, Anthony. Dear friends, to Nat and her family, first of all, I would like to express my deepest condolences and sympathies for the sorrow and the grieving that you're going through at the moment. Reading these beautiful eulogies, these heartfelt eulogies, is a testimony that even amongst these sorrows that we go through, there can always be joy. Joy in the beauties of life, even though sometimes life can bring us some tragic events. To lose a loved one isn't easy. To lose a child is very hard. And today as we are reading the prayers for the soul of Timmy, I couldn't help but bring to mind my own children and how much I love all of them and how difficult it would be to be in the situation of a parent right now. And while these thoughts were going through my mind, it was as if I was reading the prayers for the first time today, even though I've read them hundreds of times. And every word that was said in today's service, every prayer that was said to Christ, penetrated in my heart. There was a strong voice from the words that were said, which continually reminded us of the comfort they were asked to give each other at these difficult times. The reading that we read from the epistle ends with comfort one another with these words. What are the words that we're supposed to comfort one another with? They can be memories. But they're also things which express a reality which continues, which is the life to come. Many times life brings us obstacles. Many times life doesn't go the way that we want it to go or the way that we would have imagined it. And a lot of those times those answers are not given. And often I think to myself, what was the purpose of God creating us if that's going to be the case? It would have been better if God didn't create us in the first place, so we wouldn't have to go through these difficulties and traumas. But if there's one thing that our faith teaches us, is that as difficult as life can be here, Christ is fighting with us and for us. The symbol of our faith is a cross. And why would it be a cross? What a strange symbol to have for someone's faith. The one who is on the cross is Christ himself. The one whom we call Lord and Saviour. But we don't look at that symbol and think how tragic. We look at that symbol and inside us it's shouting hope. Because from the cross comes the resurrection. And in the same way as Christ was crucified and resurrected, Christ tells us that we too will pass from death into life. So yes, death is not the beginning for us, but it is, it is not the end for us, but it is the beginning of a life 
which we said in the prayers where there is no longer pain, sorrow or suffering, but only life eternal. And if there's a reality that I often think about when I lost my own love, people that I've lost have been close to me. If there was a way that I could bring them back, I often think maybe I would. But then I think to myself and I say, I don't think that they would want to, but rather they would call us to join us, to join them there where they are. And so it is these things that we're asked to contemplate on when St. Paul tells us to comfort one another with these words. I pray that our Lord, our Christ, and His Mother Mary give comfort to Nat and his and siblings and to all family and friends who are grieving the loss of Tim, but also to have hope that she is now rejoicing in the, love of, in the loving arms of God our Father. May she have a blessed paradise. May God rest her soul.
Don't get all your things. Net. Say bye to me. Yeah. Oh. Say bye to me. Say bye to me. Say bye to me. Say bye to me. Say bye just here in front of them and I'll go behind you. Christina. Christian. Oh, Where's your cat? I have one announcement to make everyone. The court charge will be leaving in about five minutes. For those of you who wish to come to the burial site, it's, at, it's on Cemetery Road, Medingley. The court charge will be leaving, will be turning left, and we'll be heading straight down there. So please head to your cars, turn your headlights on, we'll be leaving in five minutes. Thank you. Good again.
Father's ready. Everyone's starting their cards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to move the car out so you can uh, 